students welcome to the next video of our lecture series that is on vehicle maintenance and garage practice in this video we will learn about the maintenance and overhauling of the various systems of the vehicle right the systems that we learned till now was the main systems that was required for the keeping vehicle in the running condition now there are some systems which are known as an auxiliary systems or we can say they are always an important part of our vehicle but still they are secondary sources of the vehicle running machine so in this video we will learn about the various systems that is a lubrication system cooling system and all the electrical systems that is the part of our vehicle right so let's start with the maintenance of the lubrication system now in the case of the lubrication system service we saw almost in brief about this lubrication and cooling systems in the previous videos as well again that we will revise in that case first in the case of the lubrication system service main thing is to check the oil level and if the oil level is not sufficient then the oil should be replaced that procedure needs to be done at some regular intervals in the vehicle right whenever we put the vehicle in the service we will check the oil level if the oil level is sufficient then it's okay but if the oil level is below some given reference point then we need to change the oil rather than that all is the required procedures for the maintenance of the lubrication system in that case first thing is that the service of oil pan and the passages from where the oil supplies that service is required to be done in case of the lubrication system service from whenever we are changing the oil in the vehicle next thing is that i already told you about checking of the oil level how the oil level will be checked by using the tip string that is provided in the vehicle front part or in the bonnet part that tip string will be entered in our system after entering the tip string that will be removed from it and there will be two points marked on it one is the lowest level one is the full level we should be in between those two points if it is below the lower level then the oil needs to be refilled or the oil needs to be replaced after that is if the oil level is lower then the change of the oil will be done or the replacement of the oil will be done or in some cases refill of the oil is done but to change the whole oil level is a better procedure in that case next thing is the service of oil pump now the oil pump will be serviced if there is the problem in the creation of the pressure in the oil system if the oil pressure is indicated as a low oil pressure then the oil pump need to be serviced generally in case of the lubrication systems the frequency of the oil pressure pump is very less so we don't have to repair or we don't have to service the oil pump as much as other pump which is connected such as in the fuel system next thing is the pressure relief valve service now the pressure relief valve is given for the safety in the lubrication system that will be serviced if there is any problem in the creation of the pressure in the lubrication system and the last thing is the oil pressure indicators right we might have the pressure indicators which might be showing us the reading on the dashboard and those readings of the oil pressure indicators should be accurate and it should not change with our working of the vehicle so that indicators if they are showing any wrong indications or if they are showing any wrong values of the oil pressure then it needs to be repaired next thing that can be seen is the cooling system service right in the vehicle 
the cooling system is also considered as a secondary part but without the cooling system we cannot run the vehicle as the engine will overheat with the time and that overheating will create so many problems inside the engine so to avoid that we have to have the cooling system in the vehicle now in the case of the cooling system there are some factors which needs to be kept in mind or it needs to be kept in mind why we are servicing our vehicle first thing is the components or whole of the circuit of the cooling system will be cleaned whenever we are servicing our cooling system second is the bleeding of the cooling system Right. Whenever we are using the hydraulic fluid or whenever we are using the water as our source, at that time if the air is entrapped in the system, then the pressure generating capacity of that system will be reduced. As I already explained during the braking system, the bleeding is a part when air is entrapped in the system of the hydraulic circuit. That circuit needs to be maintained, the bleeding will remove the air from the system and that air after removing the proper pressure can be generated after the removal of the air from the system. So bleeding will be required whenever there is air bubbles in our cooling system. Next thing is locating the radiator leaks. If there is a loss of pressure in the cooling system, then there are chances that there are leaks in the radiator. So that leaks will be lo located by the help of the soup power method or any other method that can show to the leaks. After locating the leaks, whenever there is a leaks in the radiator, the repair needs to be done on those leaks and that should be kept airtight so that the leaks is neglected and after that the pressure that is required can be obtained. Next thing is the service of the water pump. Same as the lubrication system in the case of the cooling system as well, the service of the water pump is not as frequent as the other pumps which is required in the fuel system. So water pump needs a lesser inspection or lesser attention of our service. So if there is any problem in the pressure generation again, then once the pump of the water that is supplying the high pressure water will be checked once. And last thing is the replacement of the expansion core plugs. The expansion core plugs is given in the system for the expansion of the water that is coming after getting the heat from the engine. Right. The water comes after getting the heat from the engine and then after that the expansion of the port plugs is done. If there is any problem in the expansion port plugs then the recirculation of the cooling water will be difficult and the proper recirculation will not be obtained. So if there is any problem in the cooling water temperature then the expansion port plugs will be replaced. Next thing that is required to be seen is the greasing of the chassis. Right. What is chassis? So chassis is a part on which all the components of the vehicle is mounted. And after mounting those components, the vehicle body is mounted on the chassis. The chassis will be somewhat like you have seen in the graphics behind me. Generally, the vehicle that we are using right now is an integral construction vehicle. So, in case of the integral constructions, the different cheesy will not be given to them. Whole vehicle is manufactured as a one part. So, starting from the floor panels, whole vehicle body is mounted as a single part. So, in that case, the different cheesy is not given. So, in that case, the greasing of the cheeses will be done depending on the components of the vehicle cheese or the vehicle bottom part. To do the vehicle greasing, the main things or the main components that we need to look out is the manual transmission and automatic transmission, whatever is used in the vehicle. In the figure, you can see 
that in case of the manual transmission, the proper lubrication is required if the automatic transmission is given. In that case, if the four-wheel drive is given, then the transfer case will be provided. So, the lubrication of transfer case is required. Also, the parts of the chase is where two parts is interconnected. At that, two parts, regular interval greasing or regular interval lubrication is required. So, in the case of the chassis, it takes the maximum load in the vehicle. Right, the chassis bears the maximum load of the vehicle and because of that, in the case of the chassis, the regular interval greasing is required. Next thing is the wheel bearing greasing. Right, the wheel bearing that we saw in the case of the rear axle, in that case the wheel bearing after replacing the greasing is required. Even if we are not replacing the wheel bearings, then the greasing can be done just by removing the cap of the wheel bearings. After removing the wheel bearings, the grease will be provided in the wheel bearings and that grease will be required to keep the smooth running of our vehicle. The wheel bearing transmits the power of the axle to our wheels. So if the wheel bearing is not properly lubricated, then because of an extra friction, the wheels will not run at the speed that we actually want. So wheel bearing greasing will be required at some regular intervals as well. You can see in the figure, the wheel bearing greasing has been shown. In that case, the detailed components has been shown in the case of the wheel bearings, the wheel studs is provided on which our wheel is mounted. In the inner side, you can see the seal is provided. The seal gives you the proper capping of the wheel bearing so that our grease doesn't come out from the wheel bearings. The inner race and outer race and the hub of the bearing has been provided in between that. The separators has been provided to separate our rulers that is connected in the bearings. So, the greasing of the bearings in the wheel will be done at the regular intervals to get the proper power transmission from the XL to our wheels. Right. So, in this video we saw about the lubrication system, cooling system and chases and wheel bearing greasing. In the next video we will see about the service procedures that is required to be done on the electrical components of the vehicle. Until then, thank you so much.